Hi everyone, we are in India, Madhya Pradesh state, in Bhopal, December 2nd, 1984, and there were no warnings of the tragedy that the Union Carbide India LTD pesticide factory would unleash on that accursed night. A spill of the chemical methyl isocyanate, henceforth I called it MIC, turned the city of Bhopal into a colossal gas chamber. Let's take a step back. In the 1970s, the Union Carbide Corporation was asked to build a plant to produce Sevin, a pesticide commonly used throughout Asia. The company built the factory in Bhopal for its central location and access to transport infrastructure. The Bhopal plant housed three underground stainless steel liquid MIC storage tanks of 68,000 liters capacity, E610, E611 and E619. No tank could be filled more than 50% of its capacity, and the tank was pressurized with the gaseous nitrogen, at a pressure of 19 psi. Pressurization allowed the liquid MIC to be pumped out of each tank. Months before the tragedy, the production of the MIC was in progress and was being filled in the tanks. As per the rules, no tank was allowed to be filled with more than 30 tons of liquid MIC. But the E610 tank held 42 tons. This problem forced the Union Carbide to halt producing MIC at the Bhopal facility, and parts of the plant were shut down for maintenance. On December 1st, an attempt was made to restore the functioning of the defective tank. The attempt failed. In practice, that afternoon, in one of the three tanks, the temperature rose progressively, generating a strong increase in pressure, which went on to solicit the safety system downstream, and the residual gas transfer pipe to the emergency burner was interrupted due to corrosive phenomena that were not adequately controlled and remedied. On the evening of December 2nd, 1984, Shortly after the start of the night shift, an operator was carrying out a cleaning of the pipes in the plant where the MIC was stored. For some reasons, the high-pressure water jet ruptured the bulk. Unbeknownst to the operator, a leak from a faulty valve – valves were no longer replaced regularly – reached the MIC tanks. In the following two hours, the water penetrated one of the three underground tanks in which the compound was stored, specifically the one called E610, in which there were 42 tons of MIC. The contact between the water and the MIC gave rise to a reaction which developed heat, gradually increasing the temperature of the liquid until it boiled causing a rapid increase in pressure inside the tanks. At 10.30 pm, the technicians who attended the plant noticed that the pressure gauges of the tank showed a pressure 5.5 times higher than normal. At 11.30 pm, when the pungent smell of cooked cabbage typical of the MIC began to be felt in the air, it was decided to investigate the presence of a leak. However, none of the personnel was fully aware of the dangers of the gas stored underground, so that, only after midnight, when the pressure gauges showed 59 psi, a value 27 times higher than normal, was the alarm given, with the activation of the sirens of the plant, which was hastily evacuated. The reaction vapors were released from the tank safety valve into the plant. At 1 o'clock in the morning, there was a loud bang coming from the plant, when the emergency relief valve burst open, letting a plume of MIC gas flare up. The police 
began receiving calls from the area surrounding the plant whose residents were showing respiratory issues and trying to flee. The hospitals were alert and clarifications were requested to the factory, which however gave vague and conflicting indications, first stating that the gas was ammonia, then phosgene and finally methyl isocyanate, without however specifying its danger. At 2 in the morning, observing that the pressure in the now half empty tank had returned to normal levels, the technicians told the police that the leak had been repaired. Within hours, the streets of Bhopal were littered with human corpses as well as the carcasses of buffaloes, cows, dogs, and birds. An estimated 3,800 people died immediately. According to data from the Indian Medical Research Center, the MIC gas leak killed more than 15,000 people, while Amnesty International's estimate speaks of more than 25,000 victims. About half a million survivors were struck by the devastating immediate effects deriving from exposure to the toxic gas. Ulcers, photophobia, respiratory issues, anorexia, persistent abdominal pain, genetic problems, nerves, impaired visual and audio memory, reduced reasoning ability and much more. Following this massive tragedy, on February 1, 1989, the Union Carbide paid $470 million in damages from the disaster, out of an initial claim of $3 billion. In July 2004, India's Supreme Court ordered the government to compensate the victims and their relatives through a $330 million compensation fund. Today, 38 years after the disaster, the area of the industrial site, approximately 70 acres, has not yet been completely decontaminated and every year several children are born malformed or with serious pathologies due to the water, of which it has been certified for over 20 years that it contains chlorinated solvents and other very harmful substances, and because of the toxic sludge, which still lies undisturbed a few meters from the homes of some people who obviously cannot afford to live elsewhere. The background of the Bhopal tragedy lies in the great failure of security measures and in the reduction of personal and maintenance costs. In theory, the tanks were equipped with refrigeration systems theoretically calibrated at zero degrees centigrade with equipment for temperature and pressure control, with a specific system for maintaining the material under a nitrogen atmosphere at a pressure of about 19 psi. There were also safety valves with vent in a special compensation chamber and gas washing with a neutralizing solution of sodium hydroxide. In turn, the washing chamber was connected by pipes to an incineration torch for the residual gases, possibly still present, upstream of the outlet valve for the emission of the residues into the atmosphere. Practically, the refrigeration system had been disconnected. The nitrogen was at a pressure equal to one-tenth of the expected pressure of 19 psi. The pressure gauges of the valve connecting the pipes to the tank were faulty and water could penetrate, mixing with the MIC contained in the tank. The recently unchecked sodium hydroxide solution recirculation pump was not working and the residual gas transfer pipe to the emergency burner was interrupted due to corrosive phenomena caused by the high quantity of hydrochloric acid due to an excessive amount of residual phosgene in the system. The tragedy of Bhopal still represents the most enormous chemical disaster in history due to its gravity, territorial and temporal extension of the effects.